How's it? Today we're talking about magazine layouts and designing them in Illustrator. As you can see in a simple Google search, there's a lot of different variety of magazine uh, layouts that you can choose from. Uh, today we're, I'm just going to use a generic one. I'm going to be uh, having a placeholders for pictures, uh, some text, and some paragraph text. What I'm going to do is create a new document, Command N on the keyboard. Uh, we're going to choose A4. Uh, this chooses the number of artboards. I'm going to choose a number of uh, pages that I'm going to do. I'm going to use four pages for my magazine. Uh, I'm going to choose the third option just so it's all in one row. It doesn't get too cluttered. Um, for units, I'm going to keep inches for uh, American size unit. Uh, my bleed space, I'll show you what that is, but put 1.5, that's more of like a standard. Uh, I'm going to choose RGB right now because I'm going to publish this online too. And then later when I print it, I'm going to convert it to uh, CMYK. And this is going to be a 300 and looks like I'm good to go. So I'm going to hit OK. So now I have my four artboards and we can begin um, designing. Now if you noticed, the uh, red line are, are the bleed lines. Now what happens is the printer sometimes, uh, and not necessarily your printers at home, but you know mass printers, sometimes it's hard for those cutters to cut right on the edge of the page. And so we have these bleed lines, so just in case it misses it, um, that this is filled in. Um, for example, if we have like an image here or um, a color, we're going to have this blue um, and stretch it out to this red line as well so that way we have a little bit of an edge if that printer or if that the cut uh, cuts off. Now later when you go to like artboard two or three uh, you can go here and click right on the square in between the horizontal and vertical rulers the empty square and then click and drag it right to the edge of the paper's edge right here. What that does is it resets the rulers to uh, measure for this um, artboard or this page. Uh, what you'll also want to do is go to um, view and then hit show grid and then you'll be able to see the grid. In Illustrator preferences if you go to uh, guides and grid um, you can change the color of the grid you can also change the um, grid line. So for example notice how the intervals one two three four five grids if I want more of those, I could um, hit, let's say, 12. And if I hit OK, notice that these little grids here got more dense. So you can choose the amount of grids and preferences right there. You can also go to Preferences and choose Units to Display and choose Inches if it's not already. And these should be points. So what I'm going to do is set up my guides. Command R to show the rulers and notice they're in inches. Uh, you're going to want to know what the exact middle is. Uh, there's many ways of doing this, but one way is uh, just create a square or a rectangle across the whole horizon. You'll notice there's a dot in the middle. What you do is just click on the side ruler, any of those points, and just drag out and place that in the middle. Okay, And you can do the same thing for uh, the um, intersection in the middle. So what I'm going to do is drag my rectangle all the way down and notice there's a dot click in the, on the ruler drag it down here and now I know my intersection now if I want to divide these into a rule of thirds I could take uh, right now I have 8.23 is my uh, size on the right um, going across and if I divide that by 3 I would get 2.7. So I could hit the square, double click, 2.7, hit OK, um, move that to the edge, and then I have my point uh, here. So I have, that's one, and then I can move my square over, a rectangle, make my other one here, and now I have my rule of third here, here, and here. So I definitely make your rule of third going uh, both vertically and horizontally so that you can uh, match things up much better. Uh, if you want to like move your guides, let's say you made a mistake, you go to uh, View, Guides, and then make sure it's not locked. And then that way you can click and um, 
make that. So for the height, it's 11.69. So uh, I can go in here, 11.69 divided by 3. That's 3.9. So I can here, 3.9, OK. And I can fill that to make it a little bit more obvious. <clears throat> And right there, so I can go here. So there's one, and there's two. Hey, I was right, and there's three. So now we have our rule of thirds set up, and where our middles are. <clears throat> so I'm gonna now lock my guides because I'm pretty sure where I need to go. Although you will need uh, some guides because you don't want to go on the edge here of the um, page. So what you'll want to do is um, you usually <clears throat> go to the rectangle tool, double click uh, 0.5 inches <clears throat> and you're going to use this measurement to measure the sides here. So 0.5 here, I can take that so uh, hold on the shift key, I can rotate it over, I can put that up and right there. And I can do the same for my bottom and top. So you want to make sure that the gutters there are that uh, margin so that you don't put text in that and get too close to the edge. So again, you would do that on the side too and you would measure uh, the same measurement. Okay. Um, now it's time for your designs. So if you have the image that you want to work with, you can insert that by going File, Place. Uh, now if you, when you place your image, it, it doesn't actually copy it into the document. It only uh, has the link. So if that image disappears from your computer, then the li link will be broken because it won't be able to find that image. So for now, I'm just going to uh, use a, uh, a rectangle. And I'm going to color a different color so I know that later I'm going to fill that with a um, picture. <clears throat> and then you're going to have a title. And again, I'm probably done with this blue, so I, I can just hide it. Uh, Command 3. And then you're going to have a title. And again, if you're not sure of your title yet, but I'm just going to put creative title because hopefully it's creative and entices your uh, audience to read it okay and again you need to get this centered okay so what you can do is uh, take a rectangle all the way across hit V shift and uh, highlight the title as well and then you'll go in uh, to your window and hit align and then you can choose the middle one where it says um, align to the center and then you can move them so it's um, uh, there's another way of doing it you can take your text uh, click on the edge of the left horizon drag it all the way across to the right horizon and then type in your text so I'm going to put uh, And then all you need to do is center that by going to the Paragraph tab. And I can just center that across the page. Okay. <clears throat> and you can choose like your font either now or later depending on uh, what kind of font that you want to use to get the effect that you want to use. Now it's time for your text. So I'm going to uh, click on my text tool. Uh, I'm going to draw a, a big box, uh, text box around the area that I want to go. And make sure you don't uh, go inside these margins, that you uh, stay away from those margins. Now default font size for a magazine content is 8 to 10 in, uh, points. And then left align, 
um, you're also going to justify it and when you justify it in the paragraph you'll see justify and with the last line left okay <clears throat> so uh, you can insert your article text right there just copy and paste get some lorem ipsum uh, text and what it is is just uh, filler text uh, that doesn't really mean anything or make make anything but there's a website that you can go to um, and it'll just give you fill in text and this is what usually you see with um, websites or designs that just need fill in text and they don't want it to be noticed okay so I'm going to paste in my text uh, make sure that your text is very legible like it's a, a font that's easy to read and you might want to uh, look at magazine articles and say hey like uh, how does my text look in, in the article and you'll find that most of them are justified uh, to give yourself a flush um, if you notice that the uh, lines here it's flush to the right and create a way of using photos for a collage there but uh, when you have a magazine article you want to avoid really long text across because your eye doesn't is lazy it doesn't want to read all the way across the shorter the columns the better um, but not too short so what you can do here is go to object and then go to <clears throat> go to type and go to area type options now what you can do is number of columns we can change that to two <clears throat> now what you'll see is the gutter this is the area of space in between the text the two columns so as you can see if we increase this that space you know increases so the more space there is the more again easier it is to read but you don't want it too far apart because then the reader won't think that the um, two columns are related to each other and go well together um, also for your span this is how far it spans across um, you'll notice it stops right here if I increase that notice that's increasing on the outside and you want to make sure it's um, centered notice that here it's not centered so I would want to uh, realign it to center maybe right about there it's, it's a little bit better centered um, okay a lot of times you'll see in uh, magazines that the first letter uh, is usually drop capped uh, so what we're gonna do is do that in Illustrator now I'm gonna do it uh, the hard way but in design be a lot easier I'm gonna delete that first letter I'm gonna type that letter again <clears throat> using my text I'm gonna capitalize that and then what you'll do is click on it and then hit command shift O and that creates an outline or an object and uh, you're gonna center it right where you want it to be uh, hold down the shift key click on the other text so you select both of them and then go to object text wrap and make so what that does is uh, makes the drop cap and then you can uh, align it uh, whatever way looks the best and you could even color it uh, like you saw in the example it was a different color or match it to a, your color scheme or whatnot um, what we're also going to do is uh, add some photos if you don't have what we're going to do now is uh, insert our images if you don't have images to use right now you can just use like squares or circles and use those as placeholders um, so what you can do is <clears throat> I'm going to go in here and add this uh, duck picture that I took this weekend. Okay, and then let's say I wanted it right around here. Click on the image, hold on shift, and click on the other um, text, and object, text wrap, make. And you hit OK, and it's going to wrap that around uh, just like that. Okay. So this looks a little bit uh, weird, so I'm going to make this image a little bit smaller to make it look a little bit better. Um, let's say I had, um, I drew this crazy alien panda over the weekend as well. So if I insert the panda, and let's say I only wanted like um, part of them, I can click on the ellipse tool and then maybe draw a circle 
or what I want to keep from the panda. V as in Victor, hold down the shift key and select uh, the panda with the circle, and then control click, make clipping mask. And now I have just a circle. And now I can place him, maybe I wanted to put him right here in the text, hold on the shift key, uh, and then make clipping mask. <clears throat> right click, click. Sorry. I'm going to click on the panda, hold on the shift key, and click on the text. You can go to object, text wrap, and make. And then it wraps it right around that image. So if you don't have these images, <clears throat> now I'm going to use some of my photos. Uh, so again, I would just double check, make sure everything's good on your margins. Uh, notice this brown, I would move over your picture to make it um, bleed out to the bleeding lines. When you're all finished and you want to export um, maybe just this one out, um, what you can do is click on the artboards tool, shift O, and then um, notice it has one, two, three, and then I can go to file and export. And then I can choose which use artboards and then which one. If I choose range two, notice it will save my second page. I do three, third, and so on. So I'll just, I would just do uh, one, and it will not include the lead lines, which is fine. Um, but usually, when you send things off to a printer, like a big, the big printing presses for magazines, you send them the original file, like Illustrator, and then they'll use these lead lines. But in our case, we can just export out just the image um, to print. So that's magazines, layouts. I uh, hope you uh, can just look at some magazines, look at some different uh, options that you can have for different designs and have fun with that.